Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum. And today we are busting myths about calfskin drum heads, the elusive, the bizarro, the warm, the dark, the old calfskin drum heads, the original. There are so many opinions about calfskin drum heads and I've got loads of my own. There's a company uh, called Stern Tanning that makes calfskin heads uh, the old way where the hoop around the edge is wood and they tuck them by hand. I think they're a taxidermist. Uh, but anyway, uh, they sound fantastic. There's a lot to know about them and the first thing to know is you don't need to be scared of them. They're not crazy. They're not uh, really even difficult to deal with. They're a little idiosyncratic and there's also nothing that quite sounds like a real rawhide drum head. Lots of things come close, but it's a natural thing and uh, it's really, really special. This drum we're using today is a six and a half by 14 chrome over brass Ludwig. It's a modern drum and it has die cast hoops top and bottom. This drum's been in storage for a little while, so right now this head is tuned pretty low. The reason for that is the primary kind of difficult thing about calf heads, which is they react to the weather because they are a natural membrane. And uh, just like you would run into with a djembe or a conga um, or anything that has a leather head, when it's humid, the pitch goes way down. And when it's dry out, or if you live like in, you know, in the desert, they get really, really, really tight because there's no moisture in them. And so when you store them, you have to pitch them down a little bit so that they don't stretch out, deform, do strange stuff uh, when you're not using the drum. So first thing we'll do is kind of tune this drum up into kind of medium range, you know, that you might use for drum set playing. If you're curious why we're gonna use a mallet to tune this drum today, watch our previous video on tuning snare drums. This is going to be fairly in tune already. So we'll just do our standard thing and go in a star pattern. First key across and so on. We went up on all of the tuning keys about a full turn, and now we're kind of up in the mid to high range of what I would use this drum for, um, a six and a half like this. So the buzzwords that people usually use when they're talking about calf is dry, dark, warm, things like that. And I agree with all of those. When you're dealing with a head like this, the note is fast, the response is really fast, but even at a high tension, there's a, a sense of the head sort of giving under the stick almost a little bit in a spongy kind of way because this is kind of fibrous compared to a plastic head. And that means that, especially when you're talking about uh, orchestral music, things like that, where you want a, a very high tension primary snare drum uh, with a lot of articulation, but not synthetic or super bright sounding, um, they still turn to these kinds of heads. And um, some, in some cases, they'll use calf on the bottom as well. In terms of darkness, at a given tension, there is less bright, zingy overtone in a head like this. Particularly with rim shots, you can really hear the difference. Anytime you want a drum to sound old, or if you're trying to go for a kind of vintage sound, whether it's like a singer-songwriter thing or a vaudeville thing, you really can't go wrong with calf head because it, it does it right out of the box. With a standard bottom head, standard wires, you don't have to change anything else at all. Talking about warmth, uh, at least for me, when I think of the word 
uh, warm when talking about a drum, I'm thinking about uh, tone. I'm thinking about a nice sort of note underneath everything and something where when I do a roll or if I'm playing kind of backbeats in the center of the drum, it gives a sort of organic feel that it just feels nice under the sticks when you're doing it. Certainly with the way that this drum is tuned, it really responds well to press rolls, things of that nature. And as soon as you stop playing, the sound is gone. And that's part of that warmth, articulation, but it's also kind of dark. It's not, uh, it's not a real brittle sound. It's, it's very organic, very comfortable. When you play live with it or when you record with it, it retains that character. This is the only drum that a producer has ever specifically told me to bring. And I'm pretty sure it's just because of the head that's on it. In terms of myths and myths to bust, uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is the idea that these heads are high maintenance or a hassle to deal with. They're really not. The, there's only two things to know about them. They need to be seated properly when you first put them on the drum. And then going forward, just making sure that if you're not gonna use the drum for a while, you lower the tension, a half turn, maybe a whole turn if, if you're worried about it or if you live somewhere where the humidity really swings a lot like it does uh, here in New York. Myth number two, how durable are they? It's old technology. It's kind of the original thing. We have all these modern heads to choose from and so many of them are sort of pointed at the idea of a more durable drum head. It's true if you play in a thrash band, maybe your calf head's not gonna survive that long. It might rip, it might tear. but. For the average player, certainly for people that are doing sessions or that are doing jazz or that are doing even like fairly hard hitting stuff, they're going to survive longer actually than a mylar head because the material doesn't deform under the stick over time. It just kind of stays how it is. And uh, I was startled by that. This head has been on this drum for 10 years. I've never taken it off. I've tried some different hoops. Um, it's been on hundreds of sessions. It's been on tons of gigs. It's flown to Europe, it's been all over. And I do choose not to really thrash on it just because these heads are kind of expensive. But uh, I bought a second one when I bought this one and I haven't used it yet. So, I mean, that goes to show you 10 years and it's still going strong. So if these things are so great, why doesn't everybody use them? Well, that weather moisture thing that we were talking about earlier with storage, that comes into play kind of all the time. And especially if you live in a humid part of the country, like in the South, you know, think about, you know, Dixieland drummers or swing drummers touring through the South and having to play every day, you end up having to tune the drum up and down constantly. And all of that tuning up and down will ultimately stretch out the edge of the head after a while, your hoops are gonna be down flush with the head and it's really not gonna be usable anymore. And that is what led to the birth of synthetic heads, heads that you know you could use anytime and not have to worry about it. I mean, Remo says Weather King right on the head. That's why it says that. It is untouched by the weather. You can play it in a rainstorm, it's gonna sound exactly the same. Something like this, you take it outside to a festival and it's raining outside, it's both not going to sound great and the head's really not going to last that long uh, if it has to go through that very much. My personal favorite thing about calf heads and what I use them for the most is situations that are super brush heavy. And that is because any time that you've ever played a coated mylar head, that coating is on there, originally at least, to get some texture on the head for brush playing. A head like this has built in texture, which is how people started playing brushes on it in the first place. And you can hear how smooth and warm and subtle the sound really is. Going all the way back to Papa Joe Jones and probably people before that too, he was the first person that I saw do it. People have played on their snare drums and on their toms with their hands too. And 
there's nothing better than real calf for that, for that same kind of warmth, darkness, skin on skin kind of feel. So to sum up, calf heads are the best for a lot of things. They're not the best head for everything, but I don't think anybody should be afraid to give them a try. They are a little more expensive, but the mileage that you get out of them with just a little bit of maintenance makes it worthwhile, and it's an excellent thing to have in your arsenal of sound choices.